and he wrote one verse in which that one verse encapsulated completely and described completely the perfect definition of bhakti. What is this paradharma, this pure devotion and pure bhakti to the Supreme Lord? By understanding this definition, then we will actually be able to enter into this. But by misunderstanding, not understanding correctly what bhakti is, then it is not possible to do it. So this verse, uh, it was also commented upon by our great acharyas in our line, like Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Our Srila Gurudev has also given us the translation of this great literature, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Bindu, in which Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, he is giving a description of every word of this verse of Srila Rupa Goswami. So this verse, it is, goes like this. Anya Vilashita Shunya Jnana Karma Dhyana Vritam Anakulyena Krishnanu Shilanam Bhaktir Uttama So here he is explaining what is called Uttama Bhakti or topmost pure bhakti. Just like when we speak of water, we, we speak of pure water, not water that is contaminated or anything that is uh, added to it. So similarly here, Srimurupa Goswami is speaking about Uttam Bhakti, pure devotion to the Supreme Lord. So here, this the definition verse that is described here, it has two parts. That means the Swarup Lakshan and the Tatasta Lakshan. That means the characteristics which are the original or the Mool, uh, the important characteristics of Bhakti, and the Tatashta Lakshan, that means the marginal characteristics of Bhakti. So here, the first two lines of this verse are explaining the Tatashta Lakshan, marginal characteristics of Bhakti. What is that? That Anya Abhilashita Shunyam Jnana Karmadi Anavritam. If it is going to be Shuddha Bhakti, pure Bhakti to Krishna, then it must be completely devoid of all other desires. Anya Abhilashita Shunya. It must not have even a tinge of any other desire than to give happiness to Krishna, to benefit Krishna. Hmm? So here, Anya Abhilashita Shunya Jnana Karmadi Anavritam. He explains here that three types of desires, uh, they will cover bhakti. So pure bhakti must not be covered by these three. What are they? Jnana, karmadi, anavritam. First of all, karma. Karma means sense enjoyment. Desiring material enjoyment for my own happiness. That can also mean uh, even attaining after this life elevation to higher planets like Swargalok, heavenly planets, and attaining happiness there on the level of demigods. So that, that desire for material enjoyment in this world, in this life, or even in future lives, that, will, that tendency to gain one's personal sense enjoyment, or oh, it will cover one's bhakti. So Shuddha Bhakti cannot be covered by that. Jnana Karmadi Navritam. Then Jnana. Jnana means not uh, knowledge about the Supreme Lord's transcendental personality. That type of Jnana is favorable for Bhakti. But the Jnana which is tending toward impersonal liberation, uh, Mukti, in which the soul uh, tries to merge within the existence of the Supreme. Most persons nowadays, they have this misunderstanding that the Jiva, the Jivatma, when he attains moksha, the liberation from this cycle of birth and death, that he will merge his existence within the existence of the supreme, all-pervasive uh, Brahma. So that is a completely incorrect understanding of Vedic knowledge and Vedic truth, because the Jivatma is eternal. But those who desire, who cultivate this type of impersonal jnana, nearly shesh jnana, then they will tend to lose their personal existence. So this type of tendency cannot be there in one's performance of bhakti, otherwise it will cover bhakti. 
but knowledge of the individual nature of the soul. It is called Tvam Padarita Gyan. That knowledge is very good to understand that I am eternal, servant of God, servant of Krishna, that my existence is meant for His happiness. And Tvam Padarita Gyan means the knowledge of the Supreme Lord, how He is the Supreme Creator and Controller of every living being, and we are the uh, we are possessed by Him. Therefore, our existence is meant for His happiness. So this type of knowledge is helpful for cultivating bhakti. And then, <clears throat> Adi, Karmadi. Adi is referring to other types of motivations for happiness in this world, like the, the uh, practice of the Ashtanga Yoga, mystic yoga system. Some persons also like to cultivate this type of transcendental activity in which they practice the Stanga Yoga and gradually, by their very strict practices, they achieve mystic yoga siddhis. These, uh, uh, they are not spiritual uh, uh, achievements, they are material achievements. Some mystic yogis can achieve these different eight types of mystic yoga siddhis or perfections, like anima siddhi, lagima siddhi. They can become very small, very tiny. They can become very great. They can reach out their hand, prapti siddhi, and take anything from within this universe. Like this. We even see nowadays, uh, in India this is very common, that some persons have some mystic yoga power, and they can produce ashes in their hand or something like this, and they will try to impress people with this mystic power. But here, Rupa Goswami is saying that if someone becomes enamored, and motivated by attaining such mystic power, then what will be the result? He cannot do this Shuddha Bhakti. He cannot do Para Bhakti to Bhagavan. Uh, so his Bhakti will be covered. So these are the Tatashta Lakshan. These are the uh, marginal characteristics of Bhakti. But then in the next line, Sri Rupa Goswami, he is describing the Swarup Lakshan. That means the intrinsic uh, characteristics that define what really is Bhakti. So what is that? Anakurgena Krishna Anushilanam. So here, the word Anushilanam means a constant cultivation, constantly utilizing one's body, the senses of one's body, one's mind, one's words, and also one's emotions and desires. When all of these are constantly being cultivated under the direction of perfected guru, uh, of real Satguru, who knows the absolute truth, and one is serving his order, and serving Bhagavan Krishna under his direction. This is called Anushilana. And this Anushilana refers to constant, uh, uh, like the flowing of a, of a jar of honey. If you pour honey out of a jar, it doesn't come out in little droplets, but it comes out in one solid flowing stream. So in the same way, Real Shuddha Bhakti will be constantly flowing 24 hours daily without any interruption by one's body, mind, words, and desires. And Anukul, Anukul means that it must be uh, favorable for Krishna's benefit. Now here our Acharyas have also given some very specific description of this understanding of Anukul. Because we see in the pastimes of the Supreme Lord described in 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, like for example, when Krishna came into the wrestling arena of Kamsa, and there he saw Chanur and Mushti, very powerful wrestlers. And then actually, Krishna often in his pastimes in Braja, Vrindavan, he would wrestle all the time with his sakas, his coward boyfriends, and he would have so much pleasure and happiness from this. So coming into this wrestling arena, Krishna, who is the uh, enjoyer and taster of all rasa, he is Rasika Shekhar. So Krishna also desired to enjoy this activity of wrestling with the wrestlers. Uh, but what was their intention? Not to give Krishna happiness and pleasure, no. Their intention was to kill Krishna. That was their order from King Kamsa. So when they were wrestling with Krishna, oh, it was giving Krishna pleasure because he was tasting ras, vira ras, uh, chivalry. Uh, but the wrestlers, they were trying to kill Krishna. So can we say that because they were giving happiness to Krishna, that it was bhakti? No. 
We cannot. So this is an overextension of the definition. Uh, that means that <clears throat> if someone says that just because Krishna becomes happy, that it becomes bhakti, no. It, it cannot be accepted like that. And then there's also the possibility of underextension of the definition of bhakti. For example, uh, Mother Yashoda, Krishna's own mother in Vrindavan, her every activity, her every thought, her whole existence is for Krishna, for her beloved son Krishna. She is the emblem of motherhood and divine love in Vatsali and Prem. So she is constantly absorbed 24 hours a day. Everything that she does is for the benefit of her beautiful son Krishna. But we see in one of Krishna's pastimes, his Damodar uh, Bandana Leela. So in that Leela, uh, Krishna, he came one morning, he woke up one morning, and Mother Yashoda, she was churning uh, yogurt into butter. And Krishna came when he was very tiny and pulled on Mother Yashoda's sari and wanted to drink her breast milk. So Mother Yashoda, <coughs> she immediately took Krishna upon her lap and she fed her breast milk to Krishna. But then what happened? She was simultaneously boiling pots of milk on the stove. And suddenly the milk began to boil over on the stove. So she suddenly put Krishna down very quickly and she rushed over to save the milk from boiling on the stove. But what happened? Did Krishna become happy from this? No, he became upset. He became angry to the extent that he thought, I will do some mischief. And then the whole Leela ensued where Krishna went and began to break the pots of yogurt and feed it to the monkeys and so forth. So Krishna, he became angry and upset that his mother had stopped giving her breast milk. But Mother Yashoda was going to take care of the pots of milk on the stove. Why? Because this is for Krishna's benefit. She is going to make very beautiful milk sweets, pera and so many other preparations, rasgulas, and she is going to give them to Krishna for his benefit, for his happiness. So although Krishna was at that moment not pleased by what she did, but her activity uh, was bhakti. It was the highest form of bhakti because it was for Krishna. So in this way our acharyas have given these very specific definitions that we can understand what is the true nature of anukul to be favorable for Krishna. So in this way Rupa Goswami has defined bhakti. There are many many other more specific uh, dis, uh, <coughs> um, understandings by breakdowns of all the different words within the shloka. But in general this is the meaning of bhakti. So without understanding what pure bhakti is, what shuddha bhakti is, then we can be mistaken and we can perform something that is only a semblance of bhakti. And there are different types of semblances, bhakti abhas, like aropa siddha bhakti, sangha siddha bhakti. But real bhakti is swarup siddha bhakti, which is the pure nature of the soul. And that bhakti, it is done by the process of nava vidha bhakti, meaning shravanam, kirtanam, vishnu, smaranam, padasevanam, archanam, bandhanam, dasyam, sakyam, atmani, vedanam. This definition was given by Sri Prahlad Maharaj in Srimad Bhagavatam. So our charges are teaching us how to perform pure bhakti because only by this process can we attain the ultimate goal of life. And therefore the whole Srimad Bhagavatam is beginning with this definition of bhakti. Savai kumsam paro dharmo yato bhaktir adhokshaje ahai tuti apratihata ye atma samprasiddhati. In this way the atma will be pleased. Who is the atma? Ultimately, the Atma, the Supreme Atma, the Paramatma, that is Krishna, Bhagavan Sri Krishna himself. So if we perform this kind of bhakti, then Krishna will be pleased, and the result of that bhakti is that we will attain divine praying for the lotus feet of Krishna. भक्ति की परिभाषा सुना इसमें आप लोगों ने देखा जब जब भी चार्ल्स मुस्किल 
कृष्ण को भी रस आस्पादन करा रहे हैं किंतु जान से मार डालना चाहते हैं इसलिए यह भक्ति के अनुकूल नहीं है यह प्रतिकूल है इसलिए प्रतिकूल चीजों को नहीं करना चाहिए भक्ति के रूप दूसरी बात जो सोना मैया का दिखलाया गया कृष्ण ने दही के मटके को फोड़ दिया सारा दूध निकल गया बेट एक हाथ में लेकर कृष्ण को मारने के लिए दौड़ी और उन्हें पकड़कर पकड़ लिया और कहते बदमाश तुमको अभी मारूंगी और कृष्ण छटपट छटपट करके रोने लगे कृष्ण विश्व और भांड के रचयिता जो है उनके भी ईश्वर के ईश्वर हैं सर्वशक्तिमान है क्योंकि आज जसोदा मैया की लठिया से डर गए और आंखों से आंसुओं की धारा गिरने लगी क्या उन्होंने ये सचमुच रोया अथवा कोई अभिनय किया अभिनय नहीं कृष्ण के लीला में योग माया कृष्ण की भगवत्ता को बुला देती है और कृष्ण भगवान है जसोदा मैया भी ये भूल जाती हैं तभी ये मधुर लीलाएं होती हैं इसलिए मटके को फोड़ा और हाथ में डंडा लेकर मारो और कृष्ण उसके पीछे में भाग रहे हैं मैया मुझे मत मारा रो रहे हैं सचमुच रो रहे हैं तो ये भक्ति कैसे हुई कृष्ण को तो प्रसन्नता हुई नहीं नहीं कृष्ण के लिए ही है क्यों हमारा लड़का पीछे बिगड़ जाएगा चोरी करेगा लोगों से लड़ेगा इसलिए बचपन में यदि नहीं सुधार दो तो इसका जीवन चौपट हो जाएगा उन्होंने उनको भगवान नहीं अपना भोला भाला छोटा अबोध ही बच्चा समझ करके किया यही प्राजवासियों की मधुर सेवा है इसलिए ये भक्ति के अनुकूल है ये तो थोड़ी सी बात कृष्ण कुछ गड़बड़ कर देते हैं राधिका के पास न आकर के चंद्रावली के पास में चले जाते हैं गोपिया कहती हमारे कुंज से निकल जाओ राधा जी कहती है हम लोग गाना कुछ भी नहीं दर्शन करने चाहते इसको निकालो और कृष्ण राधा जी के पैया पड़ते हैं यह भक्ति की चरम सीमा है और इसीलिए कृष्ण कहते हैं मैं तुम्हारा ऋणी हूं जन्म जन्म मान करके ब्रह्मा की लंबी आयु पा करके भी तुम्हारे ऋण से ऋण नहीं हो सकता यह है ब्रज की भक्ति ब्रज के सखा लोग कृष्ण को कभी दंडोल प्रणाम नहीं करते अपने मुंह का जूठा निकाल कर यही तो बहुत मीठा फल है निकाल करके और कृष्ण के मुख में देते हैं ये ब्रज की भक्ति है सिद्धांत और सुबल कृष्ण से लड़ाई में कंस को मारा चारू मुश्किल को मार दिया और सुबल सखा से लड़ने में सुबल ने कृष्ण को पराजित कर दिया ऐसी ब्रज की मधुर लीला है यह है भक्ति का उदाहरण दिया पहले हम लोगों को एट फर्स्ट वी शू डिफाइन स्वरूप सिद्धा भक्ति एंड देन अदर सी इन विश्वनाथ चक्रवर्ती ठाकुर जी फर्ज स्वरूप सिद्धा भक्ति अन्ना विलासित अनुकूलीन कृष्ण अनुशीलन डिफाइन दी And after that you should define ओ तटस्थ दैन इट विल बी ओके ये तो बतलाया भक्ति का अभी ठीक से और समझिए एक उदाहरण दे करके मैं समझा रहा हूं महाराज दशरथ कई कई के कहने से अपनी प्रतिज्ञा को रखा करने के लिए 
मधुर मन में उस संकल्प तो किया रामचंद्र जी से जानकर तुरंत एकदम तैयार हो गए और भैया लक्ष्मण जी हो और सीता जी को पहले बहुत समझाए कि मत हमारे साथ में आओ पंजगन में जाना बड़ा कठिन है फिर तो दोनों मानो नहीं फिर कौशल्या सुमित्रा जी के आज्ञा से वो लोग भी इनके साथ में गए बंद में चले गए वहां पर वो निषादों का राजा उससे मिल करके और फिर चित्रकूट में चले गए उस समय में फर्जी ननिहाल में थे वशिष्ठ जी की आज्ञा से कोई जाकर के उनसे ले आया जब आए तो अयोध्यापुरी में प्रवेश किया तो कहते मेरे स्वागत के लिए कोई आया नहीं और यह नगरी तो विधवा जैसी लग रही है न जाने क्यों सभी लोग मुरी इच्छा करके चले जा रहे हैं कुछ दिन काम हुई सोचा कि महाराज पिताजी कैटई के भवन में होंगे कैटई के भवन में गए देखा गया तो सफेद कपड़े पहन रखे हैं सिर में सिंदूर नहीं है भैया ये क्या बात है पिताजी कहा गए तुम्हारे पिताजी का स्वर्ग पास हो गया भैया राम नहीं थे लक्ष्मण नहीं था तो नहीं वो कहा है वो वन जंगल में चले गए हैं किस लिए बेटा मैं तुम्हारे राजगद्दी के लिए मैंने ये सब किया राजा से दो बार मांग लिया था रामचंद्र जी चौदह वर्ष के लिए बन में जाए और भरत उसके बदले में राजा तेरे लिए ओ मेरे लिए तू डाइंग है ऐसे को हमारी माता नहीं मैं माता पिता माता और पुत्र का संबंध आज क्या कर दिया और राम नहीं यदि हमारे ऊपर में और प्रसन्न होते आज तुम्हें काट देगा और सातों ने जैसे कुबड़े को कुबड़ी को पकड़ करके अपना लातों से मारा भरत जी ने बनाया और इसके बाद में वहां वशिष्ठ ऋषि को और वहां के सब प्रजाओं को अपनी सेना को और कौशल्या मैया को सुमित्रा को लेकर के चले तो कई कई रोने लगी और उनसे कौशल्या से कहा कि बहन हमको भी साथ में हम राम से अपनी प्रतिज्ञा को उल्टा करके उनको लाने की चेष्टा करें उन्होंने उनको भी ले लिया गए चित्रकूट में चित्रकूट में पहुंचे जब तो सबसे पहले कौशल्या मैया से उन्होंने कहा मैया तू जो कहेगी राम को आदेश देगी जरूर उनको पालन करना है जरूर पालन करें हाँ बेटा ये तो ठीक है तो तुम राम से भैया से कहो जो अयोध्या लौट जाए राज सिंहासन लेकर के वहां पर रहे उन्होंने कौशल्या मैया ने कहा कि मैं तो ऐसा नहीं कर सकती क्यों क्या मैं गलत हूं नहीं गठ गलत नहीं तुम ठीक हो किंतु राम भी तो गलत नहीं है वो तो इतना धर्म में स्थिर है एक हिमालय पर्वत की बात वो तर्क से मश नहीं होगा और उसकी बात ठीक है पिताजी के आदेश को वो कैसे टाल सकता है मैं नहीं कर सकता फिर वशिष्ठ जी के यहां गए गुरुदेव आप जो कहते हैं जरूर मानेगा उसको आप आदेश दीजिए उन्होंने कहा कि बेटे मैं तो ये नहीं कर सकता क्यों क्या मैं गलत हूं नहीं आप ठीक हैं तुम ठीक हो तुम प्रेम की प्रेम का तुम अथवा अनंत समुद्र हो उसमें हिमालय जैसा पर्वत भी डूब जाएगा तो राम हिमालय के समान है दुख तो जाएगा किंतु तस से मस इधर नहीं जाएगा इसलिए मैं कैसे कहूं 
कि अपने पिता की आज्ञा छोड़ करके चली जाए वाचक से दूसरे दिन सभा बैठेगी और उसी समय में महाराज जनक वहां पर उपस्थित हुए दूसरे दिन के लिए सभा हुई विराट सभा में एक तरफ में वशिष्ठ जी महाराज जनक और ऋषि महर्षि बैठे एक तरफ में भरत एक तरफ में श्री रामचंद्र लक्ष्मण सीता बैठे और नगर के लोग सब बैठे महाराज महर्षि वशिष्ठ जी जी ने कहा आज अयोध्या की नाव समुद्र के बीच में डगमग डगमग कर रही है कोई इसको खेलने वाला नहीं है किंतु ठीक समय पर महाराज जनक की उपस्थित हुए हैं ये भरत के भी जैसे पिता हैं और गुरु हैं वैसे ही रामचंद्र जी के भी गुरु और उनके पिता के स्वरूप में हैं मैं इसे निवेदन करता हूं कि ये दोनों का क्या कर्तव्य है स्थिर करके बतलाए और उसी के अनुसार में ये लोग कर फिर उन्होंने जन को कहा जी महाराज आप जो कुछ स्थिर करेंगे ये दोनों भाई मानने के लिए बात नहीं होंगे महाराज जनक रामचंद्र जी के ओर में देखा क्या हमारी बात मानोगे तो आप हमारे गुरु और पिता ही जरूर मानूंगा भरत तर्क देखा भरत जी कहना आपने जो निर्णय कर देंगे हम उसको सिर पर करके मारेंगे उन्होंने ध्यान लगाया आपने गुरु को शंकर जी उनके गुरु हैं ठीक है ध्यान लगाया और बोले भगवान शंकर जो हमसे कहेंगे वही हम कहेंगे सोच करके थोड़ी देर रुका भरत की जीत हुई सब लोग भाई आनंदित हुए भरत भी आनंदित हुआ भरत की जीत हुई माने क्या अयोध्या में लौट करके सीना ले ले फिर कहते हैं कि देखो भरत की जीत हुई बात तो ठीक है किंतु तो प्रेम की भी एक मर्यादा होती है भक्त के प्रेम में राम डूब गए अर्थात तो राम को भक्त की बात माननी है ठीक किंतु तो प्रेम की एक मर जाता है क्या है हमारा इष्ट देव जो है जो हमारा जिसको हम प्रेम करते हैं वो किसमें खुशी रहता है भक्त को जानना चाहिए अभी तक तो भरत तुम अपने लिए सोच रहे थे रामचंद्र जी यदि बन चले जाएंगे तो हमें बड़ा कष्ट होगा सबको बड़ा कष्ट होगा राम को कष्ट होगा कि नहीं ये नहीं सोचते थे तुम सोचो जब तुम्हारा इष्ट देव राम किस में सुखी है और उसकी बात मानो तब तो तुम्हारा इष्ट देव के प्रति यथार्थ प्रेम है सुनकर के भरत जी बोले आज मेरी आंखें खुल गई मैं स्वार्थी था मैं स्वार्थ के लिए राम को लौटा लेना चाहता था आप गुरु ने हमारी आंखें खोल दी राम के पर्स गए और चरणों में बोल गिर करके बोले भैया तुम क्या चाहते हो तुम किस में सुखी रहोगे उन्होंने कहा कि तुम्हारी तो जीत हो गई है मैं अयोध्या का राज्य हमने स्वीकार किया किंतु एक बात है तुम हमारा चौदह वर्ष तक प्रतिनिधि राम कर और हमारे राज्य की रक्षा करो और चौदह वर्ष के बाद में बिना एक दिन देरी किए हुए मैं लौट आऊंगा अपना सिंहासन ले बस भरत जी ने उनकी खड़ा हूं सीट पर रखी और रन करके राम की परिक्रमा की और लौट गए इसके द्वारा ये समझिए हम जो चाहते हैं वो भक्ति नहीं है 
कृष्ण क्या चाहते हैं दो एक वाट एवर यू डू डू फॉर कृष्ण टू प्लीज कृष्ण कृष्ण को प्रसन्न करने करने के लिए करो और जब तक राम की सेवा करने से मुझे बड़ा आनंद होगा ये भक्ति अपना आनंद भक्ति नहीं है जसोदा जी ने कभी नहीं देखा अपना आनंद नंद बाबा जी ने नहीं देखा गोपियों ने अपना आनंद नहीं देखा गोपियां श्रृंगार करती हैं कृष्ण को प्रसन्न करने के लिए अन्यथा उनके शरीर पर शरीर में तनिक भी कोई आसक्ति नहीं है इसलिए भक्ति का यह तात्पर्य है आप लोग भी समझ बुझ करके जो कुछ जीवन में करें भगवान को प्रसन्न करने के भगवान तो जरा दूर है ना इसलिए गुरु को और जो भी गुरु नहीं सदगुरु नहीं किया है जो आपके तत्व ज्ञान को दे सके संसार से विरक्त नहीं है और भगवान की अनुभूति नहीं है फिर दूसरा गुरु करो और करके इन तत्वों को समझ करके और तब भगवान का भजन करो गौर प्रेमानंद अच्छा ट्रांसलेशन So we've heard what is the definition of devotion? Actually, what we're performing now is not really devotion. If a Buddha says we can hear this definition of devotion and we can understand whether our practice is in line with this definition of pure bhakti. Therefore, that act activities performed for the pleasure of Sri Krishna, performed by the body, mind, words and emotions in a way that is favorable for Krishna, which is not covered by karma or jnana, and is performed uninterruptedly, this can be called pure devotion. Therefore we heard, what does it mean for the happiness of Krishna? In the definition of devotion we heard that the two wrestlers, Chari and Mustik, they had come to kill Krishna. They were, as they were fighting Krishna, then Krishna was very happy. But we cannot call this devotion because their mood was not to give happiness to Krishna. Their mood was to kill Krishna. Therefore their mood is practical or opposed to devotion. And on the other hand, Madhya Soda, she was churning milk, churning yogurt to extract the butter for him. But Krishna broke that part of yogurt and Madhya Soda took a stick and chasing Krishna, she grabbed him. Oh rascal boy, I will beat you. And seeing that stick in the hand of Madhya Soda, Krishna began weeping. Who is Krishna? He is the Supreme Controller. Who is Krishna? He is endowed, he is possessed of unlimited power and potencies. Millions and millions of universes emanate from him, but today he is afraid of the stick in the hand of his mother. Question comes, is Krishna pretending to be afraid of the stick in the hand of his mother? No. Yoga Maya, or Krishna's potency which arranges his activities, arranged that Krishna forgot I am the Supreme Lord, and Madhya Soda thinks Krishna is my son. Therefore when she took the stick, I will beat you. Really Krishna is not joking or pretending, he is weeping. And someone may ask, is this devotion making Krishna cry? The answer is a resounding yes. Because Madhya Soda was thinking, if I do not chastise my son and control him, and teach him the path of good behavior, maybe after he'll become a criminal or a thief, his life will be disturbed. Therefore, his benefit, I am chastising and making him cry. Therefore, this is pure devotion. Therefore, she never thinks that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. She always thinks that Krishna is her son. Another example is when Sri Krishna leaves the association of Srimadhi Radhika and goes with other gopis like Chandavali. That time Srimadhi Radhika was very angry with Krishna. She gives an order to her servants, don't let that black fellow in here. He is black inside and out. In fact, nothing black should come within my vision. 
and she gives many types of abuses to Krishna. The Guru says, is this bhakti? This is the topmost level of devotion. In fact, that type of devotion is so high that Krishna himself admits, admits now pari hum me that you some job. Oh God, because I cannot repay your spotless service. I am indebted to you. Krishna said, even if I had a very, very long lifetime, I cannot repay my indebtedness to you. Therefore, this mood is called Raja Bhakti, or devotion in Vrindavan. The cowboys, they never give pranam to Krishna. If they're eating some good fruit, they give in the mouth of Krishna. Take this, it's very nice. And someone may think, this is offense, but this is not offense. This is pure devotion, because they're doing only for Krishna's enjoyment. The friends like Sridhar and Subhal, they wrestle with Krishna and defeat him by throwing him on the ground. But Krishna feels great happiness by this. Therefore, these are some examples of the sweet dealings in Vrindavan. Guru said, here's a nice example so you can understand what is devotion actually. When Gasak Maharaj had given two promises to his wife, Kaikei, therefore Kaikei demanded on the eve of Ram's coronation of king, give me these two promises. What do you want? I want that Ram will go to the forest for 14 years, and I want my son Bharat will be king. Therefore, Dasar Maharaj was forced to keep his words. Therefore, Ram was going to the forest alone, but Lakshman and Sita, they requested, we will go to the forest with you. Then Ram, he tried in very various ways to make them understand forest life is very difficult. But finally, all went to the forest, all three. At that time, Ram went to, as he entered the forest, he met Guyaka, the king of the forest people, then from there he went to Chitrakut. So meanwhile, Ram's brother, Bharat, he was not in Ayodhya when all this was going on, he was in another city, Namital. Therefore, when Bharat, he came back to Ayodhya, the city of Ram, then he saw, no one is welcoming me, no one is welcoming me, everyone looks very much depressed, Ayodhya looks like a widow, in fact, people are neglecting me, what's happening? Therefore, he thought, I cannot see my father. Maybe my father is with my mother, Kaikeyi. Therefore, Bharati went there to the palace of his mother. And he saw my mother is dressed in white cloth. And even when the husband dies, then the lady puts on white cloth and does not put any decoration on herself. And he saw my mother has white cloth and no decorations, no ornaments. What happened? She said, oh, your father has achieved a higher destination, means he's left this world. Then he said, I cannot see Ram or Sita. Oh yes, I have done this for you. I requested two benedictions from your father that Ram will go to the forest and then you will be king. I have done all this for you. Then Bhada became very angry. I will never call you mother. I will call you Queen Kaikei, but I will never call you mother. Our relationship is finished because you have opposed and offended Ram. Therefore, Bharati, he took all the citizens and ministers to the forest to try to persuade Ram, you should come back to the Ayodhya and enjoy the happiness of being the king. Therefore, especially Bharat was very intelligent. He took three people with him because he knew that Ram always listens to the advice of three people. One was his mother, Kausalya. One was my sister, Gurudev. And Janak Maharaj. Janak came after. Anyway, so they all went to the forest. Then Ram of Bharati prayed to his, the mother of Ram. Oh, you please, you request Ram to come to the forest. He will always obey your instructions. He must come back. Then Kosari said, I cannot do that. And Bharati said, am I wrong in my thinking? She said, no, your thinking is perfectly correct. But how I can tell Ram to give up the order of his father? I cannot do that. So then Bharati went to the Guru, my sister, and said the same thing. Oh Guru Dev, if you order Ram to come back to a yoga, then he must follow your instruction. Then Guru said, I cannot do that. Then Bharati said, am I wrong in my thinking? No, your thinking is perfect. Your prayer is like an ocean, and Ram's following of religious principles is like a Himalaya mountain. Himalaya never moves. It stays very strong. And sometimes even the ocean may cover a mountain, but the mountain remains fixed in his position. Therefore I cannot order Ram to give out the order of his father. Then finally Janak Maharaj came. Then Rupalaji said, Oh, Janak Maharaj, you are like the Guru. If you order 
Ram to return to the city, then he must return to the city and become king. And Janakumar said, I will give an answer tomorrow. Then on the next day in the forest, Janakumar, Vishistha Rishi and the other saints were on one side. In the middle was Ram, Lakshman and Sita. And on the other group was the various citizens watching. And Bharati, so he was also there. Therefore, Bharati asked, or Vishistha Rishi said, now the boat of Ayodhya is rocking in the ocean, it's about to sink, but we have been saved by the presence of the great knowledgeable saint named Janak. Therefore, please give an answer to the question. Therefore, Janaki said, if I give an answer, everyone will accept. Then Bharati said, yes, we will accept your order. And Ramji said, whatever you say, we will follow. So Janaki Maharaj closed his eyes and he remembered his spiritual master, Lord Shiva, Shankar. And he said, whatever Shankar inspires in my heart, I will give that answer. They were all agreed to accept the opinion of Janak Maharaj. So, Janak Maharaj said, Bharat has won. And everyone became ecstatic, Haribol. That means Bharat has won, that means Ram must come back to the kingdom. He will become king. Were, everyone was very, very happy. But then Janak Maharaj said, still, one thing you should answer. Oh Bharat, can you tell me what is Prema? What is pure love? And Bhav thought, he said, I cannot answer. Guru Dev, you tell me what is the definition, what is the meaning of prema, pure devotion? Then Janak Maharaj said, prema also has its own rule, its marjana. What is that? The part in prema, one should only have one thinking, how I can please my Lord, how I can please my worshipful deity. Therefore, Bharat, you, you should think, what does Ram want? How can I make Ram happy? Then Bharat began weeping. Oh really? I never knew what was Prem. Until today my eyes were closed. But your answer has opened my eyes. Because I was only thinking of myself, Bharat said. Because I was thinking, if Ram comes back to the city of Ayodhya, I will be very happy. But I never asked Ram, what do you want? How I can please you? Therefore weeping, he asked Ram, Oh please Ram, you tell me your desire and I will follow your order, your instruction. I want to please you. Then Ram said, I want that I will go to the forest for 14 years. And I want, I will take the kingdom and I will give it to you as my representative. Therefore, I want, I will go to the forest and I want you to be king of Ayodhya as my representative. And after 14 years, I will return. I will not be one day late. Therefore, Bada took the shoes of his brother Ram on his head and went back to Ayodhya as representative of the king. Therefore Buddha says, what is devotion? Devotion means everything I do is for Krishna's happiness, how I can please him. We should not think, oh I am doing devotion, I am very happy, Hari Paul. This is not devotion. Devotion does not mean for your own enjoyment. Madhya Soda and Nanda Baba the Gopis never think, I will serve Krishna and I will be happy. Even the gopis have no attachment to the body. The only attachment they have to the body is so this body gives happiness to Krishna. Therefore, Gurudev says, the Supreme Lord Krishna, we have not seen him. He is very, very far. Therefore, first we should try to please the spiritual master who is the representative of Krishna. What he wants, we should fulfill his desire. Then Krishna would be pleased. And if we have no guru, or maybe we've chosen a guru who is not really a bona fide spiritual master, he is not expert in all spiritual conclusions. That we may have chosen a spiritual master who is not completely renounced. We may have chosen someone who has not had complete realization of the Supreme Lord. What should we do? We should give up that false guru and accept the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master. Then we can practice pure devotion. <laughs> भागवत की कथा आप लोग 6 बजे तक जरूर आ जाएंगे और संक्षेप में यहां का ड्रामा प्ले करेंगे जिससे कि हम लोगों को अधिक समय मिले जो हम लोग भागवत पर बोल सके लो कीर्तन what quick announcement is that the day after tomorrow, Srila Gurudev will be giving initiations in the morning time. Those who wish to receive initiation from Srila Gurudev, they should come to the residence 
of Damodar Prabhu, where Srila Gurudev is staying at 9.30 a.m. And they should uh, be prepared for initiation by uh, wearing clean cloth, tilak and all. And they should, the men who want to receive initiation should come with clean shaven head. And also they can bring, everyone should bring an offering of some flowers, some fruits, and also some Lakshmi donation. Uh, and uh, anyone who wishes to receive initiation, they should uh, speak with one of the senior Vaishnavas in our community uh, that they can get a recommendation from them for Srila Gurudev. So 9.30 tomorrow, uh, day after tomorrow, Saturday, on Sunday morning. Hare Krishna, Gurudev told, from today Gurudev finishing his class here, and from tomorrow Gurudev will start his Bhagavad Katha. So Gurudev is requesting our audiences, please come just before 6. And Gurudev will arrive in here before 6. And then Gurudev can start his Hari Katha. If there is any drama, they can make very shorter. Otherwise it takes too much time. And if you all come later, then you will be deviated from Hari Katha. So, they can come be just before 6, then Guru can start at 6. And if they have drama, they can do even later on after another class. Hare Krishna. Jai Srila Gurudeva Ki Jai Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama Rama, Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna 